Skeletonses, Disney Queen Skelly here. Welcome back to another reacting video. So today we're reacting to Harley Baby's top five favorite Disney movies. Let's see how this goes. I will mention real quick, as if as I have mentioned this before in the past, Harley Baby is my inspiration for my top five videos. So just a heads up. Hey friends, it's Harley Baby 45 here, and this is the first video of my top five favorite series. This is a series where I'm just going to go through my top five favorite anything, whether it's Disney movies or Disney characters or movies, general, food, anything like that. And the sky's the limit with this. So the one that I'm going to start off with is my top five favorite Disney movies. I actually did have to write these down, otherwise I knew I would forget at least one. So... Gotta adjust the camera. It's funny because as I was watching this, I didn't know that she had five favorite Disney movies. I mean, obviously she had favorite Disney movies, but I didn't know she could rank them. And going into this, it was a surprise as to what, as to where the rankings were, which I'm sure you guys have probably thought the same thing going into my top videos. Without further ado, let's she does that. If if we ever get like super big, I can see her getting merch that says "Without further ado," and then my merch would be like, "I am five hundred percent on board." Get started. Coming in at number five, we have Robin Hood. Now we're talking the animated classic Robin Hood. Um, you know, Robin Hood being a fox, Friar Tuck being a badger. You know, all this type of thing. And she is referring to some of the more live action Robin Hoods that have been done. I know there's a couple of Disney ones. I know there are non Disney ones. I know there's a Mel Brooks one. You get it. And this movie I've watched, I don't know how many times since I've been in quarantine. It's such a cute little movie. Plus, it's a, it's a cute little love story, too. You know, with Maine Marion and Robin Hood and all the cutesy wootsy things. Number four, Aladdin. I have seen both the animated classic and I have seen the uh, live action remake and I did I think I have to take credit for her watching the live action remake. I had asked her if she had seen it, she said no. I sat her ass down in front of the TV and we watched it. I love both and I've also seen one of the sequels to Aladdin, which I believe was The Return of Jafar. Then you need to see King of uh, Aladdin King of Thieves. That one's a good one. High stakes, street rat turn royalty, because, you know, he married, no, spoiler, he married Princess Jasmine, if you haven't seen it. Again, cute little love story also. Number three. She seems so stuck, like, do I describe the movie? Do I explain why it's my favorite movie? I'll just go into whatever seems natural. Pirates of the Caribbean. I love these movies, swashbuckling pirates. You know, I'm surprised Pirates wasn't number two, because she does talk about Pirates a lot being her favorite movie. Not to mention, I'm pretty sure she was a pirate in a past life. Daring adventures. <laughs> it is a lot of fun to watch, although it, you know, they are, they are Disney films, but they are on the very darker side of Disney, especially, you know, with the sword fight. Which is true. It, I don't, I think, I think they're, most of them are PG. I don't know if any of them are PG-13. Uh, I would have to go back and look. I haven't seen any of the Pirates movies. Again, I've only watched, like, the first 20 minutes of the first one, but I'd have to look. But yes, they are on the darker side of the Disney franchise. ...and the death and, like, all this other stuff. But it is a fun time to watch, and if you haven't seen them, you need to watch them. They're awesome. Surprised she didn't mention her favorite character was Captain Barbosa. Mine is Jack Sparrow, obviously. Captain Jack Sparrow, my bad. Number two, Alice in Wonderland. Right. That's what took number two. This is no surprise to anybody who knows me. It's, although the, when you watch the, you know, the original 1951 film, it is a little bit of a weird trip. It's, it's a weird trip, but it's a cool thing to watch. Because that was one of, like, my childhood movies growing up. It wasn't exactly, like, it wasn't obviously one of my favorite movies. Like, I love Alice in Wonderland, but I wouldn't consider it a favorite. It is a weird trip. But in a way, Disney makes that weird trip make sense. And if you have the time to read the original book, you should. I have um, Alice in Wonderland and then Alice Through the Looking Glass. It's cool. It's, it's like one side is Alice in Wonderland and you flip it and the other side is Alice in the Looking Glass. 
especially when you get I've also been meaning to uh, let her borrow it. Get to the Mad Tea Party, and it's the Mad Hatter, and the March Care. It, it has been a favorite of mine for a very long time. But that doesn't compare to my number one favorite, which is the Little Mermaid. I can see how much she's actually trying to kind of be, like, organic and, like, push her way through this. I, myself, like, I understand what it's like just to be in front of a camera and to, like, talk about either yourself or something you love or something you're interested in, and you kind of just stumble on what to say. Now, a lot of YouTubers, they do write scripts, which, I mean, it, it's fine. I mean, if you need a script, you need a script. Me, personally, the way I kind of see it is I see the camera as a person be it hubby, Harley baby, my mom, my dad, just somebody I'm close to and I, I act like I'm talking to them, kind of explain, or like I'm explaining myself to someone who doesn't know me, who doesn't know the subject I'm talking about and who, you know, kind of wouldn't get it if I just showed it to them at face value. With Harley baby, at least in her earlier videos, she seemed a little stiff. And that's nothing against her because she was putting herself in front of the camera and that was something she wasn't necessarily used to. She hadn't taken YouTube as seriously as I did until fairly deep into quarantine. But now with the newer videos she's posting, which I'll cover probably way, way later, she seems more natural, more flowing. She seems more like herself. And I think that's why she's gaining more traction than she did back then. It seems like every day I look at her channel, she's gaining a sub, which is incredible. Before she started getting this huge increase, she was at like, I think, 18 subscribers. And at the time of recording, she's at 33 now. I mean, hell, when quarantine started for me, I was at 10. And then again, at time of recording, I was at four, I'm at 41. Now, I know I'm at 42. I know it's my goal to get to 50 by the end of the year, which at the time of recording this, um, I haven't hit that yet, but upon releasing this, I have no clue. Obviously, I would have already posted that video and you guys would know. But it's nice to see her growth throughout when she first started her channel to now. Because obviously, you can see the change, and I'm so proud of her for it. I This has been a favorite of mine for, as long as I remember, I literally have a Little Mermaid Funko pop over here on my desk and have a little statue over here on my desk as well. Not to mention a bunch of other little mermaids stuff that is scattered around my bedroom. I can relate to that with my Jack stuff. I have my shrine, I have my shrine, I have something that my uh, former cousin made me and I have a signed poster, I have a snowflake, I have bookmarks, yeah. I love the fact that Ariel just wants to, ex she, she wants to explore the world around her and she doesn't like being treated like a kid, and not to mention she doesn't like being controlled by her dad, by her father, the king. And you know what? You're all if you're all if she well she's not to get too personal about that because I won't share something that isn't my business to share. But I feel that uh, the control of a parent thing is very close to Harley Baby in a way. Again, I won't share what isn't mine to share. But I feel that's one of the main reasons she is close to Ariel, with me being close to Aurora. I know what it's like from, it's not like she got bullied, but she was tormented literally by, from when she was a baby and she was hunted down. In a sense, I saw that kind of like bullying. I was bullied from kindergarten up until I graduated my senior year. And not only that, but Aurora was being fed lies. She didn't know she was royalty. She didn't know she was a princess. And, you know, throughout your life, your parents are going to lie to you, which is fine. Sometimes they have to. But at the same time, as I got older, you know, my parents kept lying to me when I've been telling them over and over that you can trust me with things. You can trust me with things. And their only excuse is that they think I can't handle it. And there are days I can't. There are days I can't. Everyone has their off days and everyone has their good days. And, you know, with Aurora being told that, you know, she's royalty, it came to her as a shock. And, you know, when I get told things that, you know, were once lies and then were fed to me as truths, it shocked me as well. Not only that, but I find comfort in, I'll consider, like, the, the fairies her aunts. 
I find comfort in my aunts as well. Some of them um, understand me a little bit more than my parents do. And not only that, but, you know, the with her finding Philip, she did know him, you know, again, once upon a dream. And I kind of consider that like, well, I knew hubby once, and then we kind of regrouped back together one day. So in a sense, I can relate to Aurora the same way that Harley Baby can relate to Ariel in wanting to explore and having that kind of control in her life. She's 16 in a movie, but you know what? If she wants to go all gun ho and be like, I'm not a child anymore. I want to do this, this, and this. You know what? You go for it. And she was- Just be sure to be careful if you do that, children. You want to sacrifice pretty much anything to be with Eric. Which, you know, I'm all for love, I'm all for true love. And that is my top five favorite Disney films. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave me in the comments below what your favorite Disney film is. I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching, friends. I love you. So this was an overall really good um, video. I'm so sorry I got like super, not preachy, but I started rambling a little bit. Just when I get on a topic and I get heated, I just kind of have to get going until all my points are met and then I'm done. And then usually like I'll reiterate like within a summary at the end. Um, I did have to turn off my fan to hear her. Her voice actually gets a little bit clearer and a little bit better throughout the videos. Um, her dad gave her a microphone, which is really high, which is really good quality. He used to use it himself. And uh, yeah, uh, overall, I will give the video, we'll go 9 out of 10. I'll just take away that extra point for, for vocal, for like just hearing and all that. Um, I won't really can, I won't really like knock her down for how the pace of her video was. Again, just because when she was first starting out, uh, she was a little camera shy and that didn't necessarily go away for a while, especially because she felt awkward, like, filming in her own home. And I get it. You don't want, like, your parents to hear you and you think you're just kind of feeling awkward. I get that. I sometimes feel that way myself. So, like, my first video, I'll be, like, super quiet in the beginning. And then, like, later on in the videos, I'll just kind of forget that my parents are there and I'll just start talking and talking at, like, my normal volume that I'd be talking to a random person to. And again, overall, 9 out of 10 really good video. You guys know Harley Baby is forever and always linked in my description box to go follow her on her channel. And I'll also just uh, link this video in the description box if you guys want to watch it without me talking and yammering the entire time. So I thank y'all so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow. Bye little skeletons. Stay safe and I love you guys.